from software engineer to data engineer to software engineer. I know, I know, it sounds like a crazy story. And if you're watching this video, you're probably either thinking about going from software to data or you're thinking about going data to software. So I'm here to give you some points on what happened with my journey and why I went into data in the first place and then why I went back into software. Now to get the full list of pros and cons stating the end of what my experience was with both and why ultimately I decided to come back into software engineering and what made me happier within software engineering. So let's start from the top. In software engineering, I was working for a company who were build, building proof of concept systems and it was a great place to work. Now, because it was one of my first full stack roles, I didn't really know and I wasn't really confident in my front end development. In fact, I would go as far to say I hated front end engineering total opposite to how I feel now. Regardless of the fact I was working on some really cool things, I was working with some really great people and I was having fun on a lot of projects. We got to build out whatever we wanted because it's proof of concepts, we got to explore new technologies. And as you know, as software engineers, we love working on new things. Now it was early 2021 and all the hype was around data engineering. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing data is the new gold, data is the new oil, data is going to be amazing. Everybody needs to be in data right now. Now that was all really attractive and it really caught my eye. At the same time, I was going through a bit of a career uh, I don't want to call it a breakdown, but I was looking to move on because I was after more money and the current company that I was with, as amazing as they were, a fantastic company, they couldn't offer me a salary to stay. So along came the opportunity to apply for a data engineering role and I took it, I clasped it and I didn't let go. Now quite often in interviews, what you will we'll hear is that people buy into people, not companies. And that is very true with what happened to me. The person I interviewed with was the head of data engineering for the company I currently work for. And he is an amazing person. The only reason I moved into data with this company was because of him. He went out of his way to learn my name like nobody's ever done that before, before interview. And when he said my name exactly how it's supposed to be said, Ishak, I was like, wow, this guy really did some research there. I was impressed. But that gives you a little bit of an opening into the mindset of what data people are like. Now, we did a live technical test. It was a pair programming exercise. Obviously, at this point, I didn't know a lot about data. So I asked if it was OK if I could do it in JavaScript and Node. I was building an API and I was hitting the endpoint that I created with CLI to return back some data that was obviously being manipulated in some way. Now, we spent about two and a half hours on this tech test and I had a great time. It didn't feel like a test at all. He'd never seen it done in JavaScript before or Node and express so we had lots of questions which i was answering and we were working out together and figuring out why things weren't working and surprisingly what happened by the end of the interview we didn't even get off the phone like off the off the call literally just there and then he was like i want to give you the job i was astounded now fast forward a little bit and i was in data i was in data i was moving pipeline creating pipelines i was moving data it was a great place to be there was two seniors on the team and there was about three juniors so there was a really really diverse team of people from all around the globe there was you know, people from Korea, there was people from Egypt, there was uh, me, there was a Spanish guy, and it was amazing to work with people from so many different areas. And they were all incredibly intelligent, data-focused people. Now, as mentioned, as it first all kicked off, there was a lot of transformations going off on the company, and I was the guy, I became the pipeline guy. Now, in some companies, when you move into data, you often get to work in different parts. So you might do data engineering, but you may also do a bit of SQL, a bit of manipulation. But with this company, most of the work that we were doing was siloed into data itself. We were the, uh, the, the data wranglers, as we were called. You know, we'd get the data, we'd put it where it was needed for the data science guys, the AI, the ML, the data warehousing. We were the we were the diamond diggers and we were providing this you know this gold this data to the people who needed it to create beautiful dashboards so that takes me on to the first part of data engineering it is not the sexy side of data you will not get a lot of recognition for the work that you do nor will you get a lot of recognition for the efforts that have been put in the reason being is that the data science guys the bi the data warehousing they create all these fantastic fantastic looking magic dashboards which everybody can read from around the company and they get a huge recognition but very, very often do the data people actually, or the data engineers get some recognition for getting that data, cleaning it and putting it there in the first place for them to use. Now, a second point or problem that I found with data is that I became very siloed. So as mentioned, I was a pipeline engineer. So I'd ingest topics from Kafka connectors. I put them in S3, do a manipulation on them with a Spark job, and then they'd go into the data warehouse. Now, after about three months of doing this, I'd become very, very, very efficient at it. And it was not a challenge anymore. So I was looking for more of a challenge because I just love to constantly learn and try new things. And unfortunately that couldn't be given at the time. I did go out of my way to ask if I could maybe, maybe try some data warehousing or maybe some SQL, just on the data science side of things or BI side of things, creating some dashboards just to keep myself 
myself, keep myself busy and occupied, but unfortunately it wasn't available. So as you can see, it all became very monotonous. Now, the third thing that I would say about data as well is that it's very, very, very in the dark. It's not like building a website or a SaaS or, or an app where you get to physically see a tangible product or people are actually using what you use. With data, you don't often see what you are building. You are just moving things from one place to the other. It's in the dark until that data is used to obviously build a dashboard or something, which is not usually in the remit of the data engineers. Now, between those three things, I started to find things become very, very stale. Now, for me, I'm the kind of person who likes to work pretty fast pace. But with data, the fourth thing is that it's very, very slow and you spend a lot of time firefighting. Now, a lot of the times I was in the morning or or whenever time it was on the on-call, I was rectifying faults. Why is this spark job stopped? Why is this data not where it's supposed to be? Why is it not in the format that it's supposed to be in? That was aside from setting up the new pipelines. So it was a mix of sort of setting up new stuff, but there was a hell of a lot of firefighting and fixing the old stuff. Now, some people love that and that's cool, but it wasn't for me. So eventually what happened is I started to realize that actually I really, really miss software engineering. And maybe the grass wasn't greener for me. Now, the great thing is, is that it, this job did come with a pay rise. I got an 18,000 pound pay rise moving from software to data, which was a huge jump that my current company wouldn't obviously offer me or couldn't offer me, even though they've obviously opened up to say, well, you're welcome back anytime and I love them for that. So what I actually did was start to build up my skills back in software. I started to touch back on JavaScript, React, TypeScript, Next.js, all the things that I love and that I work with now and day to day. Now, something I often recommend people to do when I'm mentoring them is reach out to other people in the company where you are, who are not in your team or squad. Now, luckily for me, that's what I did. So so when I reached out to somebody who was a tech lead in the payment squad, I said, hey, I'm thinking about moving on because I want to move back into software. He was like, no, wait, you're not going anywhere. We don't want to lose you. Interview with my team. We've got a mid-level position open and we'd love to have you there. Now, I'd love for this story to end there, but unfortunately it didn't. I did the interview, but my skills weren't as quite where they were supposed to be because of the time I had away in data. However, what they did do is they recommend, recommended me to another squad which has been newly formed in the same company where I am now. And now I get to build SaaS, bit, SaaS tools for internal use all day long using TypeScript, React, Next.js, Storybook, Chakra, MUI, all the cool things that I've missed. So it's, it's, it's not, the grass isn't always greener however you do have to find out th things for yourself and you do have to try new things now if you're thinking about trying data or going into data i would consider what i've mentioned data is kind of slow you will be doing a lot of firefighting so if that's not your thing it's something to consider data isn't sexy you don't often get a lot of recognition for what you do or the work that you put in data is very siloed and it's quite often that you'll be stuck in one part of data and you may not get the chance to try other areas like data science ai ml unless you specifically request it and then it's not always going to happen and also don't forget you don't often get to see a tangible product of what you build you often are the person supplying the the bare bones the raw stuff of what's being built you are supplying the bricks to the building that's being built and it's the beautiful building and the artist that everybody recognizes but nobody ever recognizes who carried 10,000 bricks up that hill it's the data engineers. Now in terms of software engineering, I'm very, very happy with where I am now. And that's because I get to work on fast paced stuff and it's always a new challenge. There's no firefighting involved. A little bit of maintenance in terms of a project, but primarily it's always greenfield. There's always something to do. There's always something to build. All my products are tangible. I, I can see what I'm building as I'm building it. It's great. Loads of people use the stuff that I build. Internally, the tools are being used by hundreds of people. I get great feedback and it's it's an amazing feeling. It's, a, it's something else to see and to get the feedback from people who are actually using something that you've built it's so cool so if you are thinking about going from software into data or data into software i'd be interested in hearing your opinions and how you found my journey but also how are you thinking about tackling yours what's attracting you to data is it just the money or is it the challenge it's obviously a lot slower paced but there is still a big challenges there to be solved if you are thinking about going from data into software what's making you think about that move i'd be very very interested to know so let me know in the comments and as always please like subscribe and share i'd be very very happy to do that